<laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Mr. Licky here. This is part three of our review on fractions. Now, today, or sorry, in this video, same day, same day. In this video, we are going to be talking about how fractions actually relate to decimals. Now, the important thing to think about here is that a fraction and a decimal are virtually the same thing. They're both part of a whole, okay? When we're talking about fractions, we had the number line before between zero and one, okay? Those numbers between zero and one are all decimals. How does that relate to a fraction? Well, if we're talking about tenths, you have one over 10. If we're talking about hundreds, the denominator is 100. If we're talking about thousands, the denominator is 1,000. Okay? Now, let's look at how does that help us make a fraction into a decimal. Here we go again with equivalent fractions, guys. Good thing we've done this twice already. How do we make an equivalent fraction? You got it times the top number and the bottom number by the same thing. One over five. I want to make this into a decimal, okay? I don't know what that looks like right now. But good thing we just learned about how the place values work with the decimals, okay? What's an equivalent fraction that you can make using these fractions up here? Pretty simple. Ten. Let's go with that. How did I get from 5 to 10? You got it, times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. My fraction, the equivalent fraction, is 2 over 10. Now, we have this place value right here, tenths. This is where things get really nice. Whatever number is on top of a tenth, hundredth, or thousandth is going to be your decimal using the same decimal place from the place value. 2 over 10 is the same as 0 decimal 2. Okay? We have the tenths place value, one behind the decimal, one decimal place value here is in the tenths. All right, let's try one with hundredths. All right, one over four. Think about money. We talked about quarters, okay? How can I get four to be 100? If I've got four quarters, I've got a dollar, which is 100 cents. So I'm going to times it by a quarter, 25 cents. One times 25 is 25, okay? So my decimal, zero decimal, two, five, okay? Now, we can do the same thing with a thousand. We don't need to go into that too much, okay? Because it's exactly the same, all right? As long as we understand that, again, we need to have our fraction over 10, 100, or 1,000, we can make a decimal, okay? Now, the other thing that we want to talk about is equivalent fractions and decimals. All that means is what fraction and what decimal are equal, okay? And the example is right here. 25 over 100 is the same as 0 decimal 2, 5, which is also the same as 1 over 4, okay? To make that a little less confusing, we're going to go 1 over 4 equals 0 decimal 2, 5, which equals 25 over 100. Okay? So we've got the place value, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. We've got equivalent fractions, 1 over 4, 25 over 100. And any number that's over top of 10, 100, or 1,000 is going to give us 
a decimal. Okay? One last thing. We need to keep track of the place value. Okay? Sometimes the numbers don't equal the place value that we're in. And here's an example. If I have 3 over 1,000, that's over here. We know that there's got to be three different place values. Okay? So what we have to have is our 0 and 3 place values. Now, these zeros are important, okay, because they keep this place value. This is three thousandths, which is a small fraction. If, for example, I had three hundred over one thousand, now again, I'm going to have three place values, but it looks similar, but it's very different, okay? We need to understand that the 3 is still just a 3, but it's in that place value, okay? Thousands place value. Now, over here, I've got 300 thousands, okay? So that 3 with these two zeros is very different than that 3 with these three zeros or two zeros here, okay? So there you have it. That's how fractions and decimals are related, okay?